it's time to uh, get back to uh, securing tips and tricks. So basically, we're going to discuss different types of scenarios where you're going to learn what kind of implementation steps to do in order to uh, secure um, from what you've seen. So uh, there are two, two approaches that we should take into consideration. First of all, it's quick mitigations. And for the quick mitigations, we see something that you are able to implement pretty much right now. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, a demonstration that is related with that. And later on, you're going to see the long term mitigation that Miyush, um again is going to present. And at the end of this webinar, you're going to get a bit of a summary with the quick mitigation steps, because not everything we're going to be showing today on the webinar, but ca only a couple of things and also the long term mitigation steps. So let's get quickly into this one. So first of all, you can deploy, for example, the operating system on the USB devices, so on a USB pen drive. But the problem of this is that not every user will be uh, used to that kind of working environment. So long story short, uh, you are able to implement, for example, something that we call Windows to go. But the problem of this, well, it, mm, let me call it, it's not a problem really, but the problem of this uh, is that that particular solution is not developed anymore. So it's there, it's getting security updates. You can still uh, set up the Windows 10 on it and you can um, distribute the pen drives with your um, set up um, accepted um, compliant um, Windows Windows um, installation to the users and users would be able to boot from these particular USB sticks and then they will have Windows um, operating system that is set up according to your needs and that is in the case when users are actually using their home computers so this is one of the options now that requires of course specific pen drives for this so that could be um, a bit um, uh, costly, but on the other hand, it's a quick mitigation that allows you to assure that users are connecting to your environment only from the preset um, operating system. Another option for um, the RDP problem that I was mentioning at the very beginning was to implement, um, simply speaking, a server that could be a gateway with the multi-factor authentication. So uh, MFA, of course, could be um, uh, helping here. But what I just want to show you, it's a simple solution that you were able to quickly set up for all of the users so that uh, users, they are logging on with their uh, credentials, there could be an MFA on the top of it. And while you sign in, you've got here a possibility to log on to, for example, user's workstation that is turned on in the office. So that could be potentially a solution. Now, if we do open this, um, it could be a, a regular connection or it could be also a business app. But if you open that particular link, uh, which is purely a remote desktop connection. And this is our uh, lab at secureacademy.com. So this is a solution that we are using in real life. Then basically, um, when you get into a login option, let me show you this one. You can set up, of course, uh, over here the password. So let me log on and we are here specifying uh, the login. So it's going to be in here labs and I'm going to use, for example, SMK zero and I'm going to use some kind of a password that uh, we have generated uh, before. And eventually uh, when we set up, OK, we've got a connection. We could have a connection to our real desktop uh, that we are using every day while we are actually in the office. Yeah, so that connection takes a moment, but uh, we are already here. Here we go and let me show you and then eventually it could be your desktop. Yes, in our case, we are using this as our remote lab. So whenever, for example, our team travels or we deliver trainings, this is pretty much the solution we are using. But that is a, a solution that you can quickly set up even within a one day uh, if you've got a plan for this in order to make sure that users are, are actually connecting through some kind of a gateway. So um, this is the quick mitigation. Of course, there is a bunch of more quick mitigations we can implement. We're going to discuss them uh, in the summary, but uh, let's back, uh, get back into the long term mitigations. So to show you one of the one of the solutions here where you will be able to see basically what else you can do in order to make sure um, we are on a safe side. So this time, Miwosh, once again, back to you. Let's have a look what could be a long term mitigation and then let's get back to the summary. 
Um, okay, I'm just getting back to the slides for a second. Um, yeah. Um, okay, conditional access. That is that is the thing we are right now interested about because if we are talking about working from home or working from working from some uh, remote location, there are basically two things we have to worry about. Um, how are the users connecting to our network? So in this case, the answer and the security measure, good thing to do is VPN and enforcing it. But also it is a tricky part, um, what is connecting? So what device, what operating system, if it's safe or not? Um, and if you are that lucky and if you have a, a lot of laptops, everything configured, um, set up, and you are getting into the crisis like we have nowadays and your users can take PCs, corporate managed PCs uh, to their homes and work from, from their homes with corporate managed devices, that's great. But sometimes um, you might uh, be in a little trouble because um, PCs might, be, uh, might not be notebooks. So um, if, if you would assess the risk, you might think, okay, um, letting them using private devices, it's maybe not the best idea from the security perspective, but on the other hand, um, my users have to work in order for the company to survive. So um, some companies might allow users to work with their uh, private devices, especially if you are a cloud-owned company or um, a lot of things is in cloud and people can work with their private devices, with their mobile phones, why not? Okay, so let's let's see how to how to manage it and how to make it safe. So the thing, as, as I mentioned, is conditional access. So um, what basically what, what it basically is, um, if someone is trying to access my infrastructure, cloud or on-premise, some applications, doesn't matter, Outlook, uh, OneDrive, etc., um, they have to authenticate. They have to use their login password and uh, prove they are themselves. Okay, so I know that someone is someone, but I would like to set some rules. I would like to grant the access on some conditions. I would like uh, my users to have MFA configured, and I would like to do some checks on their devices. Even if I'm allowing to use private devices, I would like to check something. And if they will fulfill my policy, my requirements, I would grant that access. If not, I wouldn't. And as you can see here, we can base um, conditional access, for example, of the of some device properties. Um, we can define different policies per different applications. Um, we, are, we are talking here about Microsoft Intune. So th these are the um, capabilities of Microsoft Intune. I will show it to you in a second. Um, we can also uh, base our conditions on the location. So uh, if we are operating, for example, uh, only from, I don't know, Germany, and we know that no one is traveling, we can allow only uh, IP addresses from Germany, or we can limit IP addresses, whatever. Um, we can also um, take uh, the session user risk, but we will not get into that because right now the purpose is to show the conditional access and therefore I am going to share my screen. So um, again, uh, right now I know which one. Okay, and we can see uh, portal Azure.com here. So we are going to Intune. And some of you might think, okay, why Intune? This is MDM solution, mobile device management. So it's about probably mobile phones, some tablets, some small mobile devices, definitely not Windows. But Intune is also about Windows. And this is this is great. So this is MDM from Microsoft, which allows us to manage Android devices, iOS devices, but also Windows computers. Um, so this is generally the great tool. If you would like to uh, go through each window here, through each configuration option, for, uh, through everything we can set up here, uh, it would take like, I, I don't know, a week or something. And to, to uh, discuss the enrollment possibilities, etc. But we are not focusing about that. We have some crisis. So um, I would like to get some information about the device. I would like to create a policy. For example, only newest Windows 10 and with uh, antivirus and real-time protection turned on. Okay. Uh, and actually with Intune, I can do it. Uh, I can do it without managing someone's devices. People would be quite angry if I would um, configure everything on their private devices. I just want to know, to check something. And uh, I have a, 
I have this this feeling that my policy is good. I would like to grant access on this condition. Okay, so let's see how it's done because actually it's configured here. So we're going to device compliance. And as you can see, I have previously defined Windows 10 BYOD policy. So this is the policy and in my case for Windows 10 computers, I'm allowing only Windows 10. I don't like seven, all right? Only 10 is good in my opinion here. So uh, we have Windows 10 BYOD, okay. And let's see how it looks quickly. Oh, something interesting happened here. Let's maybe refresh it because I do not see half of the page. Um, okay it's also interesting how does it uh, work in different browsers and and firefox for example when i was trying to set it some buttons were not working and edge is definitely better for this but as you can see some sometimes something is quite interesting so okay we have a policy here we have one compliant device and one non-compliant um yeah and let's see what is set here quickly for you to understand we have two pcs prepared for today um, I have them here. So we have Intune 1, we have Intune 2, and we will switch to them in a second, but let's let's uh, quickly inspect this policy. We have one computer which is compliant, it is okay, and we have the second one which is not compliant, something is wrong. And actually here you can, uh, you have plenty of options here, but you can also see what is not compliant. Um, so if we would go here to device compliance, we would be able to see my rules and we would be able to see which of them is fulfilled. So in case of this computer, uh, we have anti-spyware turned on, okay, password complexity is uh, compliant, but antivirus and real-time protection is not. So everything is okay except that things. And what does it mean? If, we're, uh, if we would look only to Intune, um, I can set the policy which says something like this. Um, this group of users, in my case, Windows 10 BYOD, um, their devices must fulfill these recommendations. If they are not all um, matched, if they are not compliant, even one, I am flagging device as not compliant. And that's it for Intune. This is capability of Intune. If in Intune you can configure devices, you can define policies and mark device as compliant or not. If you are managing corporate devices, this gives you a great visibility of, of your settings and your compliance, but here, uh, in my case, uh, if I would like to grant conditional access, Intune itself is not a complete solution. So let's get back to the first panel. And the uh, second thing, uh, which is not Intune itself, it's a part of Azure Active Directory, Premium is conditional access. And, okay, uh, it's loaded. And here you can see some default policies, but I have created my own. I have created new policy and let's quickly see what it does. Um, we have here specified that some users, uh, in my case is a group of users, for all apps, this is interesting. Uh, if you are, if you will be ever configuring this policy, please make sure to make uh, appropriate exclusions because uh, in this case, if you would not exclude Microsoft Intune, private devices, uh, would not be able to register themselves in Intune and therefore the status could not be checked. So uh, in, in, at the same time, you would be demanding some settings to be uh, compliant, but you will not be able to check them because device is not compliant and Intune cannot work. So this is good exclusion and good thing to remember. And okay, I haven't specified any, spec uh, any specific conditions. We have two controls set, as you can see here, I am demanding MFA and Intune compliance. I, I just want my users to have MFA because it rises security greatly. And I want their devices to be compliant and my policies are not very strict. I, the only thing I want from them is to have um, updated Windows 10 device, some complex password um, and antivirus turned on. I do not even demand Windows Defender anything which is approved by Microsoft would be okay for me. So quite basic things. If we are thinking about private devices, for example, I personally, I would not uh, demand from my users a BitLocker encryption because um, in most cases, people would not have um, Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise or Education Edition. So that's enough for me. Um, yeah, and additionally, I have said here that users would uh, have to authenticate every two hours. So that's the policy and see if it actually works. If we would get back to our machines, uh, you already seen that on Intune 01 machine, uh, Outlook is working fine. We have uh, 
we can access corporate resources some some passwords is here too okay we can try that and it should work because this device as you have some scenario is compliant with my policy so this is actually working we can log into applications um, we can go to to teams we can uh, use browser to lo log into portal.office.com um, and it's okay it's working but if we would switch to device number two which is not compliant things are not that well let's try to open outlook maybe in the meantime uh, web access and let's see how is this working here oops okay i can get to this why because my device is not compliant and the great thing another great thing about uh this is that user can actually go to device management portal you can avoid some calls from the help desk to to help us because uh, they can do they can go here and you have excluded microsoft engine from that policy even from uh un not compliant device i can go here as a user and only here because this is the only exclusion and see why my device is flagged not compliant. So if I'm working from home, I have the possibility to fix it on my own. I can see that uh, this is about Windows Defender IoT malware, uh, about antivirus. I can see some um, some tips here and I can actually go here, um, enable it, check status and it should be okay. It should work. So yeah, let's, let's try Outlook, but it's also not working. So I can assure you. Um, so that that's that's the thing that's conditional access and um this is uh something maybe it's maybe it's long-term mitigation yeah i agree with that but conditional access itself can be implemented quite quickly uh in case of situation like uh what we have now and it can really really enhance your security so um with that quick few steps you can make sure that um, devices are at least not that bad for example, if we have this little fellow here, Windows 7, favorite systems of many, it also would not work. It's not even a Windows 10. I have defined policy only for Windows 10 and nothing else would be allowed. If we would try to connect here um, with B CQDemo Pro, it will definitely not work. It's not uh, compliant with my policy. And in Windows 10, uh, it's actually okay mfi that's good it's on my phone um in windows 10 it is quite great because in, in windows 7 you, you just get you can get there from here okay bye uh, and you are in trouble because in case of windows 7 despite the fact that it's not supported and shouldn't be used anymore uh enrollment of intune was not that easy but if we are in windows 10 you can configure enrollment uh to be automatic so you're users only have to um, do something which is called workplace join so this device is not joined into the active Di Azure Active Directory it's already registered the difference is that if we are joined I would be able to log into Windows with this account if I am only registered this device is registered MDM is checking its status in my in my case but it's not managed and corporate accounts cannot uh, sign into that uh, Windows machine. And uh, in, uh, in any time, users can just uh, remove that and it can be normal, ordinary, private device. So that's good. And um, self-enrollment in Windows 10 is uh, so simple that users can do it themselves. So it's quite convenient solution for um, for making sure what devices are connecting um okay let's quickly go back to the slides and see one other thing uh for intune um okay so in my case i had cloud only deployment our cqdemo pro is uh office 365 tenant but also uh intune can be configured it's a little bit more complicated but it's possible to configure it to protect together with conditional access on-premise um infrastructure so you can apply conditional access policy to control and to um, secure everything so that's quite great um, Intune is a fine solution so definitely recommend to 
Um, take a quick look at it. There are also other MDMs, but if we are talking about quickly setting up conditional access uh, for Windows 10 devices, and it's it, one of the easiest. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, worth trying. Okay, so for the summary, we are getting back to Paula again. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Miłosz, um, for the great part of the presentation. So, uh, yeah, it's time for summary. Uh, we won't take uh, much of your time, uh, just a little bit to get into the points that, uh, in our opinion, should be taken into consideration while implementing a secure uh, remote access. So, um, to do a quick mitigations on the user side. So that might sound quite easy, but on the other hand, we could not miss that particular part. So eventually, um, things like when you are working from the cafe and so on, do not leave your device unattended. Make sure that you know where it is and so on, because uh, it's easy uh, to get that kind of thing stolen. And um, when we've got a personal device, as we already mentioned, that security might be a little bit lowered on those. Uh, on the other hand, while you are connecting to public Wi-Fi, Miwosh was also showing you demonstration uh, where you were able to play with that kind of a traffic, uh, with, the, with the wireless traffic. So eventually remember uh, that you've got a VPN through which you can connect to, and that could be a way uh, to mitigate it. On the other hand, uh, whenever we are playing with software on the machines, Arthur was showing you the situation where there was a user's computer, with the software that uh, unfortunately was vulnerable. And on the other hand, everybody else that is able to access your device could be potentially a threat uh, to uh, corporate information. Now, more interesting part, I believe for most of us, which is a quick mitigations on the enterprise side. These ones involve things like implementing operating system on a pen drive, which we already mentioned, which is Windows to go. But there is also a possibility to enable multi-factor authentication on different types of services. For example, in Office 365, you've got a possibility to do it so that as and when we was logging on, that was pretty much the case. You are able to put uh, that or get the SMS and from uh, your mobile phone, you are able to introduce it to log on uh, together with your password, or you can also have authenticator app. So different types of factors that you are using to authenticate simply uh, as simple as this. Now, things like MFA for VPN, very important thing, because uh, you could see also within our demonstrations that we are able to extract password from the memory of the operating system, not necessarily for Windows logon, but for things that are stored in the credential manager. So anything that could actually um, be used in order to connect to enterprise services. But Things like updates, simple thing, um, whenever there is some kind of a vulnerability with the vendor of the VPN solution you are using, we need to make sure actively this time, particularly important thing uh, that this particular solution is up to date, but also communication with users that uh, since we are performing remote work, that kind of threats might increase. So that's why we have to be tuned in order to make sure that we are not falling for different types of phishing attempts. On the other hand, um, whenever we are thinking about IT security personnel, these guys need to be prepared to answer questions, that's for sure, but also to review logs that are released with the remote access. So quite a, a I would say common thing, but on the other hand, that's the thing that we are, or in some companies that we know people are not focusing on. This time we need to know where to look at in order to make sure that we're able to detect uh, a malicious logon and so on. And eventually we need to know what to do in such case. Um, so it depends, of course, on the situation. And on the other hand, we need to be in general uh, prepared for a little bit larger bandwidth uh, because uh, that's what we are all experiencing um, also while, for example, delivering this webinar. Uh, on the other hand, when we are thinking about long-term mitigations, there is much, much more to do. Things like implementations of different types of solutions as Miwash was showing you to manage different types of devices as well, mobile devices, as well uh, user computers that are your personal computers connecting to the corporate network and so on. The possibility to 
isolate the machines, for example, while using VPN from each other so that they are able only to connect to dedicated services. Or you can use the solution that I was showing to have the remote access in order to use maybe not even the connection to your um, regular corporate computer that is out there in the office, but it could be as well just a link in order to make sure that you are able to open your business app. So if that's possible, of course, because not every app can be done this way, but most of them they can. So that's why um, we presented that solution and it's quick to implement too. On the other hand, from the VPN perspective, we need to make sure, of course, that it's highly available um, and redundant. So this is a clear, clear case, but uh, this is the moment where it's not just a VPN somewhere out there um, working and presenting as the possibility to connect to the remote infrastructure, but also um, the uh, high available VPN because this is where pretty much people will be uh, connecting through and also uh, different types of um, situations that are clientless related maybe um, VDI could be an option over here who knows but this is the long-term mitigation yes so that eventually you've got um, the computer or certain connection that you make somewhere you access the infrastructure through the portal and uh, this is the place where you are able to uh, do your job so these are the different types of mitigations that are worth uh, having a look at. Now, eventually, while we are uh, looking at um, our planning, um, so th the goal is very simple for this. So we need to make sure that your employees at the end are able to, to do their job and they want to do their job correctly. So without the right tools, without clear expectations, without the guidance, uh, there will be pretty much left playing a, a kind of a guessing game uh, how they should proceed. So what will be their way to share data with each other? What will be their way to cooperate? So we need to think right now actively what can we do to make sure that we are setting our employees for uh, work um, remotely and eventually this is our new practice and we kind of all know that so we want to set up some standards, we want to set up some expectations and we, we need to have some procedures um, in place for all of our employees. So there's a couple of questions eventually that we will need to ask and uh, what that could be. So uh, one of those could be, will they be working from their personal computers and devices or their corporate ones? Um, so this is what we try to answer within this webinar. Do they have access to uh, different types of third-party software if yes then how is this a portal of a third-party software that you just need a username and password and that's it or do they have to access that software through your local network and so on so um will that be a vpn will that be a remote desktop uh will that be a gateway that so, so the remote desktop uh, server through which they're going to be connecting to their app. So there are different options um, for work and what are in general the conditions that are optimal. Yeah? So we don't want to create something difficult. We want to make sure that they're going to be connecting securely uh, to their business app. So once you have accounted in general for that kind of like questions, we need to make sure that uh, that kind of like whatever we like information we gather um, works for us as a good resource that will create some expectations that will provide a framework uh, to make sure that um, eventually we are providing an efficient working a remote environment and at the end uh, some of the things might be quite difficult to achieve within the short time frames but on the other hand um, we, we see that it's not really worth the effort. It is an effort that we have to make to make sure that our critical functions within the companies are maintained and that they're working securely. So um, what we just trying to say is that eventually this is not a very easy time for us right now. And um, looking at the present threat, it looks like the, the COVID-19 it's more imminent uh, than the more abstract threat of breaks in cyber. But eventually uh, for the uh, remote work uh, to effectively manage it, to be to be productive in that time, um, different types of companies, they need to have a good approach to this particular situation. And um, we have to have a level, level um, uh, hat uh, and 
plan. So this is basically uh, the approach that we are presenting here. So regarding different types of resources, some of you guys were asking for links. So that's something that we're going to be sharing in the summary blog post on our blog. But for now, um, regardless of the time zone, please have a look at a couple of a couple of things here. First of all, NIST perspective. So this is this alert message that I was uh, mentioning at the very beginning. So please have a look at this. Um, it's very interesting from CERT. And um, if it's about interesting article um, that is nice to read uh, for the afternoon, uh, then basically um, what is nice to uh, look at, it's the fourth summary about the future of the um, of the VPNs. Uh, so uh, this is this is um, something that it's a nice reading for the afternoon, um, looking at what kind of different problems do we have. So if you guys have questions, um, then please, of course, do not hesitate them to put them on our blog. So this is the, the blog address where we will need to um, eventually post some questions. And this is the place where you will be able to uh, get the different types of tools as well and the presentation and so on so do not hesitate to get there we've got over there lots of different types of videos as well that are free um and that uh, we share with you to improve the level of uh, cyber security and knowledge so a little bit of knowledge so a little bit of a um, uh, good good insight